Oh, now they will get this big hard hitter in the mid. And now you think about the Kunkka and you're like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so what else do they play? Do they like sniper? Do they go Pugna or something? I, I sniper might be cool. Is it, wait, is it actually? I don't know if it's the shaman replacing the. OD. I think so, so because Jespers were banning it, right? Yeah, they well, go Pugna. It, it's like the sides have flipped, and now Moneski are banning Ember as well. It feels like the Ember almost got banned instead, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so they, yeah, this is the. Great Pugna. Yes, very good much Pugna better game. than the, the Sniper in the in terms of having a Nog on your team already, right? Like, these yeah. are the two lane matchups yeah. that we talk about, uh, the Pugna or the Sniper. And so, so this is the thing, though. Like, so th those those are each immediate snap picks coming out, right? Like, yeah. thinking about, okay, what's the answer to this? What's the answer to this? I'm worried that, like, Janespers' draft, normally it's about creating chaos for this Naga Siren to get out of control. D is that really what, like, Pugna does if there's an Enigma that's out there? Like, Enigma uh, kind of wants to be FK farming. Naga kind of wants to be FK farming. I'm worried there's not going to be... Because the uh, next hero is going to be a March hero. So, like, who plays with the Pugna? Pugna's not nearly as elusive as, like, you know, the other heroes that we've been seeing Gunner playing. So, that's a little bit concerning. And I'm wondering if this Pugna could potentially end up being along the same lines as like the Viper pick in the previous game where it's the, in theory, it's the counter to the OD, right? Yeah. Is it the counter in practice? Like if OD just doesn't come to any fights early and he waits for a BKB timing, then what happens? Like right. if he just goes and farms treads, Kaya, blink, BKB before he turns up to any fight. But does he lose all of his towers? That's it. Maybe. A lot uh, could could happen. Depends on what uh, how fast your Nespers can go. Like, what if they went for something like the Beastmaster? Yeah. Maybe not necessarily a Beastmaster because of the Timber Saw, but yeah. So they got the Oracle to purge off the Decrep now as well. It's pretty helpful against Pugna. Um, what else is it for? It's a really here? good Jakiro game for Janespers, I think. Oh yeah. You know, Song set up. The only problem is the Rubik. Lay down I some I fire. Like I'd almost rather see this be like a four of uh, a four of Enigma and then like pick up other supports here last. So that, that way you can at, at least like run around with somebody behind the Pugna. Hmm. The Grimstroke is Grimstrick is interesting. I think I feel like it's mostly for the Phantom this game almost. Yeah, against against, against the ban. timber and the OD, yeah. but like this is the thing that's weird, right? Like they ban the doom, but what's March playing? Is it like I think March they, they assume March is playing Grimstroke. Yeah. They're gonna have Febby Enigma, and then they would have gone for the Frev Doom, but they could still do the Frev Beastmaster if they want to. Even though like Oracle's good against single target, but uh, the Roar is pretty good against the OD, which is like big juicy BKB target that you want to focus down. And they could just push with those four heroes. It would be kind of scary, right? Enigma, the Eidolons, and the Beastmaster, and then a Pugna, and a Grimstroke. Oh, Whoa. this is different. So this is a switch up. Okay. So they have their own Dispel now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not doing a whole lot this isn't, game. Isn't Ench kind of oh, notoriously yeah. weak right now? I think that's Can't actually right really strong. Because you can get the creeps now. And th it's one of the few heroes that can get like the broken creeps level one. That's an interesting dynamic. That is true. Is this going to be like? Is that enough though to warrant the pick? Is I this mean, a March Enchantress or is it a? a I think it's Febby, and then Frev's playing the Enigma. It could be a Frev yeah. Ench, but like, I what do you buy on her? What What do you? I mean, I, I get that she's hard to right click in the lane. She yeah. dominates lanes, but then yeah. like, what do you do mid game? Do you buy auras? Do you buy damage? Do you? I I'm a little confused. And you don't have like, Chen's got the teleport. He's and the the healing yeah. aura. He's got other utility. Ench is just. Either if you're a support, you're going to do mediocre damage, um, and you, you don't have a permanent creep I army. think we've only seen her versus Darkseer lately. Yes. Mm. That was the matchup I was I was picturing, but couldn't remember. So it's you can... Uh, what's the dispel? I guess just Fate's Edict? I think nothing. I, I don't think they're even picking it for the dispel. I think they're just picking it for, yeah, strong lanes and... They must have Something a plan, like some sort of a build. She's like the strong laner that doesn't transition into anything after winning the lane. It's that's really it's cool. It's a dying 2.0. Yeah. Against, uh, I think if you get farm, it's really good against Timbersaw. In uh, what sense? Like with the uh, impetus? Yeah. yeah, okay. So I, I kind of would rather see it be a four of Enchantress here. I mean, you're definitely not wrong if she gets early farm. I mean, she can put out a decent amount of damage. Yeah. It's been what? so long since know. I've seen an inch get a lot of farm priority. I'm like a though. weaver this game. Dude, what is, is it? What do they even play? Yeah. Hey. Whoa. Hey, 
with yeah. a sniper rifle. Mm. Guys, Get I think we killed the, this draft, the, the by the buggy. way. Yeah, we all got that inch. <laughs> fucking slayed it. Get out of here. <laughs> and it, is, it is a forever <laughs> inch. So yeah. she's going to be in the three, yeah. getting some farm priority. I really am looking forward to see what his build is. Yeah. And how he's going to play this. Uh, um, I like the Mineski lineup because I'm scared of the inch I to back it. <laughs> I, I think I, so well, I, I, as well. Yeah, I have a lot of confidence in this Moon OD, even against the Pugnafic. So I am I am going in for Mineski. I am a Moon fan, but I think that uh, Genespris, I feel like there's, you don't just randomly pick Ench. Somebody on that team said, I want Ench. It's going to let me carry the game. It's forever. I'm going to own this whoever. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm believing in him. I'm believing in forever. It's an okay. exciting hero because it can really rack up a bunch of kills, and that's how Frev used to win all these games on J-Storm, yeah. is that they would just give him Marana, and he would kill, like, seven people at the start of the game, and you're just like, I don't know how this guy's doing it, and then the next game he looked like not Frev again. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, hmm. yeah. Uh, Potato Panel has decided then. Are you guys... Mineski? All Mineski? No, I'm, I'm no, Genesis. Oh, he's Genesis. 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 I'm Mineski. Oh. All right, a split panel. What about I you? Think, I think Mineski. I, th I think Mineski. I gotta I gotta favor the OD. There's a reason this hero has been first phase banned almost every game. All right. Well, uh, the little intros are happening. If you want to take us on in there, I don't know. We can just pop on in. You guys can see the beautiful 23 Savage Naga sign oh, intro. Oh, she is lovely, and she's just Gorgeous. hanging out. Gorgeous. Coming down the runway. What a pretty lady. Indeed. Okay. We are into it. Game number three. The break point here in this series, uh, the winner of this will be one win away from the international. High fives all around. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Hub, Bot TI, and the international. What more could you ask for in life? More money. <laughs> a house. All right. Well, a wife, a baby. Go ahead and ruin it. Well, I've got a lot of problems, Trent. You're a step ahead of me. I can tell. Um, Moon. He's going mid. He's going to be up against the Pugna. How does this matchup go in lane? Is it a lane counter, or is it supposed to be more of a mid-game team fight counter when it, it comes to the Pugna? It's definitely more of a mid-game. Yeah. Thing. But okay. the lane is also fine because he's so fast. Yeah, and the you know, decrypt's annoying. I, I know that. Yeah, you can't bully him, but you still have astral shenanigans you can do as OD, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on the mid lane because we don't get to see it that often. Uh, no, definitely not. Usually the Pugna gets banned out from the OD pickers in the past, like, four or five months. But uh, lately OD's just being snap picked and picked all the time, and everyone's been ignoring the Pugna. So we'll see if it, it's well worth it here. Well, it seems TJMM want to do a little bit of lane shenanigans. The Unicorn, she is actually a Unicorn, Trent. I did not know that there was a Unicorn set. There you go. It's like the Coddle oh. one, too. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> all right, relax. Three bounties for TJMM. Uh, but they will put Forever in the solo safe lane, and that means they are going to aggro try with the Naga Siren, it looks like. So similar to what we saw last time, right? This, uh, this whole oh, idea mind. of... Febby's going up top. Yeah, but he's going to be jungling. Because the, yeah. the whole point is that you use the, uh, the Enigma to pull back one of the lanes, and you want to do it in the lane they have 23 Savage in. Because mm -hmm. uh, they have a oh, very oh, binary way that. of playing 23 Savage. Uh, he, he just... He farms. Yeah, he farms. And they then he either farms. win or they lose. And then he fights after it's he's It's like farmed. he fights for 20 minutes, and then it's like, team, have we won or lost the game? He kind of feels like a win more player, where if yeah. they, like, his team still has to win the early game. It's, that I guess that's not necessarily true, because they almost turned it around in game, uh, in one of the games versus uh, Adroit earlier, but. I hear what you're saying, though. Yeah. And I don't necessarily disagree. We haven't seen a ton of versatility out of Savage. And his, his impact in the first 20 minutes is yeah. And impressively minimal for a position one player. Yes, and I think inversely, his mid-game impact has been fairly exceptionally high in a lot of these games, especially when he gets like the Morphling or something. Yeah. So he kind of makes up for it, and I think that's um, partially why we've been praising him so much. But here, when it's all on the line, sometimes you got to switch it up. The same old, same old is not enough. Check in on this Moon versus Gunner matchup here, the Pugna and OD. And then, of course, we are going to keep some eyes up on Ferev's Enchantress, who will be under assault. They go for the level one Nature's Attendance, a three-on-one. The Ench does not have a lot of survivability outside of the heal. Do they have the damage? It's close, but not enough. I thought they would actually have the right clicks. It's kind of worrisome, though, because the uh, uh, level three, for example, on the Oracle, that's a lot of magic damage. Oh, they're trying to make the play. 
<laughs> They're wondering if Fred will come back to the wave so they pre-charge the uh, Fortune's End on the Weaver. Very sneaky. That's something. Uh, Bimbo going to bump into Febby here in the jungle. Get some eyes. Sees the Eidolons. Knows what's up. Weaver having a fine time to start off this lane. Just about even with the Naga. But as Basekit mentioned during the draft, uh, Timber saw pretty good at kind of handling this pressure, regardless of who he's up against. And KP absolutely having a fine lane. Up top now. Enchantress in some trouble. Forever on the run. They'll have it this time. There it is. First blood for the baby. And Nico Baby instantly TVs back to the tower now that's to get a the carry last player. Yeah. Now that's a carry play. He knows what he's doing. I like that. That's value. I was all excited to watch the mid lane, and then I forgot to. Uh, looks like uh, just another Astral to Gunner. He still gets to deny onto that range creep, it, though. It's so. surprisingly even. They're, they're kind of interrupting each other between the Astrals and the Decreps. They're yeah. theory of mutual destruction here. And March is lurking around here, too. So uh, perhaps hoping that uh, Moon will step a little bit out of uh, pace here. KP just going to farm up the creeps inside the jungle. We're not in the lane anymore. Boring old Enigma, just farming it up. Rubik trying to decide where he's most needed. And uh, yeah, not not a whole lot between March and uh, Raging Potato, eh? They're just one guy is kind of camping mid a little bit. He's under a ward. The Rubik's running back and forth between the areas. Down bottom, the Nog and the Timber aren't really getting anything going on here either. Looks like Moon has hit a bit of a, a problem point here, though. Gunner starting to zone him up pretty hard whenever he steps up. Little break point for the Pugna. Rev is truly 1v3ing, though. Well, they did kill him once. That's uh, the only issue. But this is the stage of the game where Ench feels pretty good. Two points in Untouchable, two points in Attendance. I mean, he's still level four and able to come back like this. So impressive nonetheless. Uh, the only problem is that the Nature's Attendance, the cooldown doesn't get any better. It's always at level 30 or, uh, 35 seconds. So uh, even now, uh, they could just maybe go on him again because they have relatively short cooldowns. Yeah. Uh, he isn't. Really getting much farm, nor is he denying much farm, though, is the huge issue. Um, Weaver is really having an okay time. Behind a couple CS on the Naga, but he did get that first blood gold, so that kind of makes up for it. March again back in the mid lane here. With the stroke, they might be able to get this with another decrep. Moon had the ward here, too, but no, Gunner not going to try and run it down. And uh, despite the... The last hit advantage there is 21 and 6 to the 20 and 9. Obviously, very close. There's been way more spam put forth onto Moon. So he's about uh, 400 gold behind Gunner right now, just because he has to keep buying all this regen to keep up with the uh, decrep blasts. And the five minute boundary up top, Rev sitting on top, but you're also watching one there too. But they get the telekinesis and chuck him back. All right, looks like it will go even. Bimbo going to walk up and grab the other. Okay, two for two. Gunner going to take a couple of love taps, but which way is this going to go? Moon takes a Q. <laughs> Just another pretty quiet early game from these two teams. Five and a half minutes, one kill. And you have a... Like, everyone's kind of playing next to each other. Like, you have Rev dancing back and forth with the heals. You've got yeah. 23 Savage playing inside the Radiant Jungle, just pulling these waves in. But they can't really contest because you got Febby in here, too, with the Eidolons. A very strange Dota happening here today as uh, these teams try and uh, create the strangest Dota they can to uh, make it to TI. Uh, uh, Rage Potato. mid. They're going to find him, and that should be a dead Rubik. Lots of burst damage, and the Dire will get up on the board. Yeah. Other side, Febby putting some hurt into the boogie. Can he get the deny? Yep. And a lot of right clicks as well. TP home. Oh. Ooh. All right. Febby moved those. I don't know if he's going to get it or not, though. It's kind of close. It's pretty close. I thought Naga might rotate up and try to find that kill. Uh, probably why he felt forced to TP. Would have been a pincer play the other way. Yeah, exactly. So, 
Looking good for Genespris, and this kind of passive play will benefit the team that has the superior jungle clear, and Enigma definitely uh, gives you the advantage in that regard. So not surprised to see a net worth edge. Naga, number one on net worth, she's now cut and creep, so she's just fine. However, there is a Midas up on Nico, able to get away with this first item, no boots, no Wraith Band, straight Midas. Yeah, so. that's the uh, advantage of the Weaver uh, in this game, too, to, like picking it like that. And his, his whole mid game looks good. Um, one of the concerns would be the Grimstroke can be a little bit annoying with Phantom's Embrace, but uh, Invisibility, of course, always able to help you out there, too. So just getting outside of the sentry range. And he's going to hop right on the grab. They did do their little play up top and the combination of the Timber Chain from KP. Quick kill, but yeah, you're seeing in the mid lane and moving on to Moon at the same time. Yeah. Double rotations, Bimbo going to be okay. Decrep onto March, keeps him safe from those tower shots. Uh, so they go one for one. Um, Genesperus should be pretty happy with that, trading Enchantress for the space that they can seize mid to get the OD. Yeah, it's going to be a while before they can bring down this tower, but uh, still working on it there. And then uh, March going to okay. lose the uh, the battle. Did he? Was he trying to try and got popped too close I, to it? I believe he was still really low, right? Because he just got saved with the tower shots, and he just got cut off to the shrine. Ah, by, uh, okay. By Ninja Boogie. Meanwhile, Radiant Jungle, Moon finds an Enigma. Febby looking for the TP, that won't happen. Ambitious play there as Bimbo comes in with the Interrupt, and Moon will deny the deny, AKA find the kill. Precisely. Oh, now Nico Baby has uh, transferred his position down bottom next to the Naga here. Does see the uh, clarity, so he knows which one is real, but that's gonna put the, the Timber Saw up top here for KP. He's just gonna start grabbing the waves behind Forev. Mid lane again, more harassment here onto Moon. No rotations coming from other dire heroes, but Ninja Boogie comes through and just puts a little bit of harass back onto Gunner. Not a great start to this game from Moon. He's uh, below the inch in terms of net worth, and he's even a thousand gold behind that Pugna. They're chasing up after KP in the top lane here too. Not an easy hero to get, might but they be able brought to a find lot. him. Big yeah. time magic damage. Between the Ench ulti and all that damage from the Pugna, this is the big advantage of Pugna, uh, Pugna over Timber, man. Big time magical burst. Who cares about reactive? Certainly not Pugna. Savage. Song on the way. Oh, come on. It thinks the illusions are the same as the real heroes. Assisted camera operator, please. It's a bit silly. He's trying to keep up the illusion of the uh, illusions. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But uh, either way, nice song TP. That's one of the great things about the Naga. You can farm in enemy territory like that because you have this get out of jail free card that basically no other position one has at nine minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't work that often. You know, once every three minutes or so. So you can't be too crazy. But still, you're, you're right. It is a very powerful tool. It's nice that she can do that. Yeah. Mench uh, having a fine time here. 3k net worth. Looks like uh, just a Hurricane Pike potentially. Dragonlance first and then Jeez, maybe these a are pipe. Some low level supports camp on the high ground. Sure are. Moving in on to Ninja Boogie. The Dire ready to invade. There is no black hole here. Rubik onto the high ground. Not going to make it as they bring him down. Moon comes in. He's going to get this bounty room, but he might pay for it. Up to the high ground we go. Stroke. A lot of damage from Gunner inbound. The right click's starting to stack up, but it won't be enough. Moon's dead. Genesperus coming out big. Yeah, that was a, a bit too wild for How me. Bounties did they get? Uh, looks like two for two. So another even spread. Well, back onto Frev here. They have the telekinesis if he steps too far forward. They might be able to quickly chop him down. Well, but Bevy's here, though. Yeah. And this time he has the black hole. So maybe not the easiest setup. Rubik's only level five, yeah, and just they'll just it. burn it. Yeah, Great use of the cooldown. You can't black hole anyone when Rubik's around anyway, so take the opportunity to kill him. Just give him the business. I, I like what KP did there. He went into the trees almost as if he was going to start TPing, and oh, then he just TPed right back to his thing. Okay, I thought he was gonna just going to cut the next wave, but anyone miss me? he did just die like right up behind the tier one and the tier two, so maybe thinking that's not the best idea for him. Little nervous for Mineski, though. Looking at this gold graph, it's a solid 3K, 3,500 net worth lead. Nice experience edge as well. Naga number one on the charts. Weaver looking for a Maelstrom up next, but this early game going great for Genesperus.
Yeah, Timber is not uh, quite the scary hero that you need him to be uh, yet in this game. I'd like to see him trying to get some kills and uh, maybe see this Weaver kind of do the same thing. Is he ever going to be? It feels like any time KP gets involved, the Pugna's right there to just shut him down. Yeah, there is way more focus in the draft on the Timber than ha there has been in the past. That is definitely true. And now you hit this break point where there's an Aether Lens out on Pugna, and KP is not really that close to a hood. He can only be so brave. Reb just sproinking around here. Okay. Savage gets a freebie on Bimbo. While well, we're watching to see if they're going to die for F. And now it does begin with the Timber and the Oracle. How many people are going to come and assist? Has some Still stick charges. Too. Has the attendance. Locked in place. The Chakram doing some hurt, but Ferev. You know, he has TP. Tanky enough, and he's just going to TP out. Oracle was coming. Or not Oracle, rather. Uh, I think it was the Grimstroke. Yeah, it was. And he canceled and was like, oh, okay, cool. And he TPs in the tier two, so now Ninja Boogie just getting whomped by the impetus. They should still get the tower, though, but at the same time, Gunner's pressuring a tier two. So they're forced to uh, glyph for this. All right, Pugna definitely siege this, spamming out those nether blasts. Glyph comes out for the dire. Helps delay this push. Nico Baby still pretty committed. That was worth. Good rotation. The timber goes bottom. He'll shove that out. And uh, the fears of the Kaya Blink BKB on the OD are uh, pretty far away here. <laughs> He is the lowest of the cores in the game. Not by too much, but he is also dying. Yep, good read here. He used his astral. Oh, 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 I said dying. He's not dead. He's living. The wand. Still, that's scary, though. I mean, that that's your mid-hero. That's your big boy. And now a smoke. Now. So the super early game rotations have not been the forte of uh, either team really so far this series, but uh, these mid game ones right around like 10 to 15, lots of those. And here we go again, not even gonna need the black hole. It's back in four, three, two, one. Not necessary. They will finish him off. Up top now. KP struggling. Fred finds oh, it. Oh, jeez. That was a 3v1, dude. Bim Bo. This Enchanter is performing so much better than expected. Rev is doing it. Oh. Is Encha Sleeper Hero Trent? I don't know. I don't think so. Are they just playing around it perfectly right now? They just don't have the right heroes to deal with it? I mean, Magical Burst is very good, and they are pretty light on Magical Burst outside of the OD, and he's so far behind, he ain't first at shit. Yeah, that is definitely part of it. They also don't have a lot of stuns, as we've you know seen by the fact you just like, <laughs> TP away. Yeah, that's definitely another problem. Now into the Weaver. He is silenced here. Nico Baby only with a Midas. Oh my god. Destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. The tips as well, right on top. Gunner playing so well on this Pugna this game. Jeez, that was instantaneous. The Nether Blast for 423, the life drain for 324 right after. Damn. And uh, I mean, you look at the, the stun from the Inkswell into a Silence, into a Malefice, as well as a Decrep. Not a real good chance how, to pop the ulti. How come nobody on the Radiant's building a pipe or even a hood? Well, who would build it? Uh, Timber? Timber needs a Yules. He's not wrong. He has to deal with Decrep. He's to deal with uh, Malefice. I'd be tempted to stop off for the hood first. Well, that still is not a pipe. Yeah. I don't know, man. I see why he feels like he needs the Yules. In on the Nico, another oh beautiful soul bind. They were just ready and waiting. Two down on Mineski. It the doesn't patience. Even look fair. I mean, to be fair, that's what snowballing Pugna looks like. He does so much burst damage, it doesn't feel fair.
how fast are these games gonna go? And it's sort of the hallmark of this hero, but you're right, we're playing ping pong. These just are just stomps back and forth uh, up top as well. I see a, a dying Rubik, perhaps. He's very low. Yeah, Bimbo forced to hang out in the tree line, and Ferev just gonna finish off this tower. He's got a siege creep, he'll tank it, no big deal. Creeps don't know what to do, they're just standing there. Rubik going for the big play deny, but does not get it. 10K net worth now, 12 to four. And uh, this is all space created for Naga. You look at that net worth ga uh, gap and yikes. Yeah. Savage is just, and he's about to have a defusal. There it is. 17 minutes, Manta defused, triple Wraith fan. Very farmed Naga. God, this guy farms so fast. All right, the full-on chase. We got four heroes. Can we kill an inch? No. The answer is negative. No. She's speedy, Trent. Look at that. She trots. Three, seven, three. Oh, she's a great gallop. Animal. She, she can you gallops. Hear it? I can very hear it. soft. It's very, you know. Well, she she's got small hooves. You see. Yes. So got she the, the small tones of a purge patch note. They you know? they had to uh, give her a softer sound than the centaur. Clippity cloppity, clippity cloppity. The centaurs are loud. Yes, clearly. They have hooves. Hers are like, they're just hooves. I mean, it sounds like a, a damn stampede up here. That's a lot of legs <laughs> for two heroes. Boogie. Pulling the creeps. Okay, not going to pursue. Whoa. Oh, I thought that was the tier three. I was like, no way. All right, Gunner gets the tier two mid. Now they're going to go in onto OD. It's not even a fight. Uh, the OD is just dead. It, it looked like he already has a dag on. <laughs> not quite. No. Oh, the black hole. It's the song All of the right, siren. Rubik's on the high ground, but he's stunned too. Can they get both? Is he going to go for it? Febby, he's doing the math. He's got the ruler. Oh, he misses it. But they might still kill Rubik. Never mind. He gets the interrupt. Timber goes one way and back into the base. March going in hard. He'll fall, but they get the boogie. Three down. No buybacks. Nico. Was soul bound, but he'll be okay now. Jumping out of the base, trying to finish off Febby. The nice defensive decrep keeps him alive. Dire Courier did die. Still a tier two. So they were at the high ground, but uh, not quite. Now the Radiant TPing out, looking for a punishment here. Ninja Boogie dies immediately. OD probably uh, gonna go down. Very aggressive play, and OD with the Blink Dagger makes it back, but for how long? Gunner in hot pursuit, finds him with a Decrep, looking for some magic damage. Astral does not keep him alive. Forev with a triple. Now Rubik, gonna get caught by a net. Follow up Q, the Nether oh, Blast hurts. Woo. Ultra kill now for Forev he with almost a Rampage. Yeah, that was so close to being a Rampage if there was a Sentry down. And now they will get this tier two. So a little bit of a sloppy fight out of TJMM, but it matters not. That's a 14K lead at 20 minutes. And now the Dagon comes out to help increase their burst power. Just what they needed. <laughs> All right, Yules is out. Timber still not looking for any kind of magic resistance. Mechanism up next. I'm telling you, bud, they need the pipe. Well, that would be great, but easier said than done. Well, you're not they wrong can't, on uh, that one. You know, just cr perform alchemy and I make mean, gold out of nowhere. Is this a game where you can make an argument that KP should just buy a cloak? Like just a just like a cloak. Like the, the casual? Yeah, I mean, if you upgrade it, cool. You know, maybe you want a pipe later. You know, you can't get it now, but but just a cloak. I guess the bracers do help make a big difference, but. I mean, maybe one bracer could be a hood, I think is, is worth discussing. Uh -huh. You know, like, I, I want to see a cloak instead of that quelling blade. Because you're just getting blown up. And now with the Dagon, I mean, they can almost like pull the zero in. You know, Trinity Savage was pretty involved early on this game. He's 7 0 and 10. Yeah, I think oh, he sorry, was. Sorry, that's, that's Gunner. Uh, he's, he's 0 but he 2. He is and pretty five. involved. 2 0 and 5, like actually showing up for a couple of these. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Gunner, 7-0 and 10. Absolutely ridiculous this game. Bimbo, sit out. Yeah, maybe he uh, heard you flaming him on the panel and 
Decided to change it up. What did I play before? Playing the same style. No. Just farming, not doing anything for 20 minutes. Oh, no, that's why they're savage. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like how involved he's been. Minus one next, uh, one on the uh, Nether Blast cooldown. So, gonna make this game even yep. quicker. Tier three falls. Now the high ground siege. Already a buyback from Ruby Tuesday. I'm impressed and that Nico, Nico Baby's getting a tier three. He's doing what he can. Unlikely to matter. Oh, yep. Zoe goes to cut the wave behind them. And of course, Nico is gonna get pulled back. Will not commit. And they are gonna back out. Okay, Moon. Nice rotation through the pit. Looks like they'll maybe grab this shrine before they retreat. Yeah, I think Gunner will be enough to send Nico packing. And there is the heart, the hood, the pipe. Oh, that's a lot of items. Now, a BKB does come out onto the Weaver, but... Ooh, a black hole. They're going to find Moon. Jeez. That is ridiculous. Debster. <laughs> She's got a great taunt laugh. She really does. I just It's very shrill. It's got obnoxious. that very, very pretentious sound to yes. it. Like, oh, you thought you could kill me. <laughs> I like it a lot. Big fan. You got to get in their heads, Trent. Well, I think they're uh, they're all up in my head. I'm impressed. Mm. I know the game, uh, Saucy. after what happened before with Mineski, I, I thought they really knew what Janespris was all about. And Janespris has uh, shown us a, a bit of a different side. Some of the same stuff, but definitely some different stuff. The Pugna and uh, the Ench. This Naga is just moving on in. 1v4. They are going to retreat. I guess Forev was inbound. But they see that Naga. They are running for the hills. Bottom now, tier three standing. Rubik does manage to grab a steal on the nature's attendance. Yeah, a couple of smokes ready here. And uh, they will wear off, but high look, ground we go. Look at Perez's positioning. They have the song set up here. Charging in the front line. Remember, they don't have black hole, so the song doesn't set up for as much. That is true. And they might try to just take the fight. There is not a glyph for the Radiant either, so they can just focus structures and try to siege this down if the illusions are going to be able to repel like this. KP very low. But he'll survive. Meanwhile, in the back, it's just all Nico, baby. He's trying to focus down the team, or the, the back line, but kind of can't. And they're still getting his tower. March and Febby will survive. They force out the time lapse with an ensnare. Impetus is chunking. I think Fe or, uh, Fev believes he's reached unkillable status here. Well, he might not be wrong with that assessment. Uh, he's got... Just about as much in as the OD. So, yeah. Kind of difficult to deal with him. And it feels almost like a free lane of barracks. And the rest stands over. in the front. And and they should just GG. And that's it. I, I, I just think they have no options. You cannot kill these heroes. Nico's doing everything he can. They're so split right now. Like, he's trying to pick on the weak ones, but they'll just dust him straight up. BKB down. He doesn't have a time lapse. March does get got by Moon. Song of the Siren now. Another spread out fight. Savage will just TP. Gunner grabs one on the way out. But they might pick up a kill onto Gunner here. He's very low on mana. Has a glimmer. Remember, and the Aegis. That's a lot of gold. Oh my gosh. No detection. Oh, Dust was on cooldown. OD had it in his backpack. Yeah. Oh man. That is brutal. Well, a hold from Mineski. They keep that top lane standing. Oh, did I do that? They uh, killed one of the supports. <sighs> so, a brutal game three for Mineski fans. Febby just looking for the solo side lane pickoff so he knows about the Rubik. He'll uh, pop the trees and hope he finds something. I mean, I do think that's a really good way to play around the Rubik counter pick. Yeah. 
uh, if you're an Enigma. We haven't seen as many teams do that. But it's a really great play. Yeah, might as well, except you're just getting a solo pick off and be happy about it. Yeah. He does have BKB, no Blink Dagger. So uh, last lane, I'd say it was, what, two lost lanes uh, for Genesperus and uh, one sort of a wash, kind of evenish. This game, uh, the Inch, the Inch Weaver was maybe the closest, I feel like, to a, to a wash. I don't know, the Weaver got some farm, but the Inch getting the, the kills definitely helped. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. Pugna, whoa, what are you doing? Song of the Siren, oh, there's the baiting. reset. Febby trying to do this again. Does he grab the Rubik? No, it's another miss, but they're gonna have to counter it with something because he's got the BKB on. Oh, the stolen black hole. On illusions. Wow, you got him. Now the OD under assault. Nico Baby also taking some damage, shoots out the bugs. Moon forced the BKB as he heads back towards the well. Maneski hanging on surprisingly well. It's a very spread out fight with the Enchantress still in the base, just repelling the whole team of Maneski, it feels like. Eco Baby no longer with an ultimate or a BKB. Huge burst from Gunner, not enough to finish him off, but it will repel to the well. This will be the end of this tier three. Glyph buys it a, a few seconds. Well, they're holding up for everything. They have 16 stolen in on the OD. When he can get past the Naga Illusions, maybe he can find a play. 20 seconds on Naga ult, so they will have a reset coming up soon. Now Hex onto the Timber. Boom! Buyback from KP immediately. Nico just trying to clear out these Eidolons, but it's a futile effort. And the wise words of the Borg, resistance is futile, Trent. Yes, please. Mineski. I, I give, uncle. They're just watching it go, the slow bleed. Febby, TP home, he makes it. And we missed another kill on March. Moon mans up, drops the hammer, does finish off Gunner. Bimbo actually gets credit for that, and they will pick up for Rev. All right, seems they have found a way to resist the Borg. But, Perhaps uh, uh, to hoping to uh, put a little bit of mental game into this one <laughs> by making Wineski play I it mean, out. Yeah, to or what sorry, avail? I mean, play it out. I mean, it's not like they defended the barracks. You know, right. I ended my streak for Megas. I think I can live with that if I'm Gunner. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I'm say win percent here and one percent. I'm gonna say zero. Wow, you sniped it. Yeah, I knew it. You sniped it. Big fat goose egg. Maybe you're half cyborg as well. What Maybe. Do I know? I don't think they're making the breadstick. <laughs> I think it's going to be zero the rest of the game. They're stuck at the bagel? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got nothing else. This felt almost like an outdraft in the way we saw it executed. You know, like you said up top, Ferev got some okay farm, Weaver farmed, but it was just so much space creation. I guess that's the power of the Ench. You can 1v3 a lane and still feel okay about it. You're not dying, maybe you're trading, but just the nature of 1v3 opens up so much space around the map and it kind of crippled the OD. Guardians on the way for KP. Trent. Can you yeah. explain to me why Guardians makes more sense than a hood or a pipe? Well, in this game, he does have uh, some annoying stuff to deal with, like uh, the Malthus that we talked about, right? He's looking for the Dispel. He's got the uh, the Decrep. You know, you're talking about the pipe. Even if he has the pipe, the Decrep, and all that amplification, he'll get more value out of just getting rid of the Decrep. That is an interesting point. Like if he gets, if he has a pipe and he gets Decrep. Dagon 5 <laughs> He'd rather just not be decrypt, I think. <laughs> and uh, it's still going to help him, like, help the rest of the team, too. But kind of. I mean, what? I, I don't think whatever item he buys will matter in the end. Well, right not now. anymore. No. But, I mean, now that we're at this point, we don't have much else to talk about. No, so you're right. So it is indeed time to go uh, with me here, man. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm there. How about this big golden roast piggy? 
I love golden piggies. That's exciting. I hear if uh, you turn him into a pig, he drops an extra cheese. Oh, yeah? Is that the strats? Wow. 1% of the time, though. Yeah, tell your post. And uh, looks like... Oh, not going to get lucky here. Uh, okay, clearly. just a single cheese. Yeah. Right, remember to spread that information all around, everyone. Clearly true. My dad works at Nintendo. And uh, now they're going to take that Aegis and Cheese and begin this this terrible match. I don't know how they're going to do it. How will they get high ground into the Megas? I see a giant green line up top drawn here by Febby. He's had enough. Reb on the front lines. He's taunting him here. They go in onto the edge. Can they bring him down? That's a Cheese. Moon has already used the ulti. Black that Hole works. on two. Connects. Weaver's down. And down goes the Oracle as well. GG is called. Ah. And TJMM take game three in the best of five series, the grand finals of this Southeast Asian regional qualifier. One win away from Shanghai 2019. Hi, hi panel. A lot of deep thoughts there from our panel. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, a textbook closeout. Savage ends that game without a single death. 4-0 and 10. Had an absolute field day farming. GPM 778. Wow. That's really good. 427 last hits in however long that game took to close out. That was like the triple lane lose. 32 minutes. I think uh, the that's a depressing win percent graph. Yeah. Uh, the way you talked about the, the Timbersaw before, though, and the idea of the magic damage amplification and, like, how good, oh, Skywrath Mage and all these heroes are and why we were seeing these Timber games where he looked unkillable. In a game where you have that sort of magic damage and you just see three heroes walk up and kill him super easily, he can't play like a normal Timbersaw, right? Yeah. And if he's the only guy that got a good lane by just giving him a free lane and letting your Naga farm there the whole time, you're just going to win because Timber tries to use that uh, that early gold somewhere on the map and he just dies. He just yeah. feeds it back to you. The Naga takes that gold, makes more gold, and then becomes unkillable. Yeah, I think the Skywrath can feel a little bit all in in some of these scenarios, even though he is a hard counter to uh, the Timber. But in this case, you have the Pugna for a good lane matchup mid, and then yeah. you have this added bonus of he's also really good against the Timber mid game. Um, and, yeah, exactly. You, you get, like, double value out of the Pugna, and you, you get to see the power of the hard counter. You're probably right. I, I don't know if the hood would have made a big difference, but it's just so sad seeing that usually tanky Timbersaw get, like, 80% to zero in at, at 15 minutes. Like, well, we, uh, we shouted out the DK last time. Shout out to the Ench. A little bit of an unusual hero here. We're mixing it up still I as we get to the end of the C qualifiers. Yeah, that's one where I'm happy to be proven wrong. I thought that in that yeah. inch wouldn't get much done, but Ferev played a hell of a game. You can't even see it in the stats, the amount of space this guy created. Oh, look at the hero damage, 25.5K. That's nothing to slouch at. That's true. He did do a lot of damage, but yeah. space, dude, space. The and final that's frontier. where we are. We're going to take a break here at the dark side of the room, then we're going to come back. Game number four, hopefully you'll be here to join us. Will Janespris go to TI? Find out after this.